So this is the ASUS TUF A15 2024 edition. We've got a Ryzen 9 8945H uh, for the processor, and it's eight cores, 16 threads, so it's gonna be a good all-around processor. Think of this like the uh, Intel equivalent of the i7. It's gonna be fast, high performance, and especially in this chassis, we're gonna have some good thermal throughput to actually hopefully put some really good Cinemetch numbers and other multi-core performance numbers out. Now, you can get up to an RTX 4070 in this laptop, but really, the main reason to consider the ASUS TUF A15 over the A16 or the F16 is the screen quality, at least currently rated by ASUS. This is 500 nits, 2.5K, so 2560 by 1440p, 16 by nine aspect ratio. So this is not a 16 by 10 aspect ratio laptop. That's a key difference. You know, 15.6 inch display versus 16 inch display. Not as much screen real estate, smaller screen to body ratio, only 80% screen to body ratio on this laptop. That's a distinct disadvantage, but the advantage is that this is not only 500 nits brightness, but it's also 100% DCI-P3 color gamut, which is far and above better than the F16 and A16 laptops. So, I mean, if you're talking like your graphic designer, video editor, or a gamer who's just very sensitive to like screen quality, this gets you a really high-end screen at a closer, more budget-friendly uh, price point because it is 16 by nine. You know, it's just easier, cheaper to put a high-quality 16 by nine aspect ratio display into here than a uh, 16 by 10 aspect ratio where it's like more expensive to put the higher-end displays in. So, for a budget laptop, this is going to be one of the very best displays that money can buy. Now, I say budget, but I really mean like uh, lower mid-range probably in terms of pricing. I don't know what the pricing on this is yet, but if you're interested in pricing, I will have a link to my list where I put links on where you can buy every laptop in 2024. So it's in my listing list, links down below, and we'll be updating that list with all the laptops from CES 2024, including this one. So we don't know the exact release date on this, so refer to my listing page. Uh, for updates, you can follow that list to get the daily updates on all the pricing and availability for all the laptops. Since this is a tough notebook, that means it's gone through military durability testing. It's got right here, according to this, drop, shake, heat, cold, and humidity. So, I mean, if you're like, like I said, you're a backpacker, you go into the Antarctic, you live in a super cold environment, you are a college student, you're always throwing this in your backpack, you're jostling it around, you know. Uh, this is designed to at least take a more punishment than your average gaming laptop. The keyboard is a membrane keyboard. It's soft, it feels good to type on. You've got a number pad here, but it's not clicky, it's not mechanical, and some people would prefer that. Uh, the touchpad is a glass touchpad. It feels quite good. For ports, we have USB 4 on this port, a USB-C here, both of them have DisplayPort 1.4, and 100 watts of power delivery, which is great. You've got a USB-A 3.2, a headset port, HDMI 2.1, an Ethernet facing up, which is really nice, power adapter port, and on the right side, we just have a single USB-A 3.2. So the ports on this are all right, they're not amazing, they're not terrible. The main thing is you're missing Thunderbolt 4 certification, so certain uh, docks and eGPUs won't be functional with this laptop. That said, USB 4 has similar specs, throughput, all of that. It just doesn't have Thunderbolt 4 certification. So, yeah. There'll still be a lot of functionality in the ports here, just not quite ideally. Uh, what I would love in ports, and it doesn't have a full-size SD card reader or a micro SD card reader, so if you're someone who's a creative, you know, I think this laptop definitely create, uh, caters to creatives on like a medium to small budget. And sadly, no SD card means you're gonna need to use a dongle or plug your camera directly into the laptop to transfer footage. The keyboard backlight is a single zone RGB, so you can change the keyboard light, color, and uh, brightness but it's not perky RGB, which is one of the areas that ASUS saves money to make the laptop cheaper. So there's obviously, obviously if you spend more money, you can get more CPU performance, you can get a 16 by 10 aspect ratio display, uh, but for the vast majority of users, this is gonna be enough to get everything done that you wanna get done, play games, 
and have a great overall experience. Now, of course, since this only has an RTX 4050, 60, or 70 options, that means you're gonna be limited on VRAM and you have a QHD display, so do keep that in mind. You might have to turn textures down in a lot of games, but as long as you're willing to fiddle with settings, you should be able to play a ton of games on this laptop, many of them on ultra or very high settings. Now, we do have a webcam up at the top and we do have Dolby Atmos speakers. I mean, I don't, I've never heard speakers in the Tough Series be exceptionally good or anything. They're always just like kind of average gaming laptop speakers. So don't expect too much there. The max TGP on the RTX 4070 is up to 140 watts, but realistically, uh, it's not like 110 watts is all you really need for an RTX 4070 to get the most possible performance. Now, since this has a Ryzen 8000 series chip, it does have the Ryzen AI NPU, which can be used for the Windows AI Assistant. This has two SSD slots and upgradable RAM as well. Now you have a 90 watt hour battery in here, which is very good, that's above average. Not quite the maximum of, of 99 watt hours, but it's almost there. And Asus claims over nine hours of battery life, and that's probably pretty realistic as long as you are very optimized uh, with your battery usage. Speaking of being optimized, you do have Advanced Optimus and DDR5 5600 RAM, so you get fast RAM, quick GPU switching with a MUX switch, and you also have NVIDIA G-Sync. That's a lot of premium high-end features for a laptop that's not gonna break the bank. So that's the Asus Tough A15. If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and check out my channel for all of my CES coverage. I am making dozens of laptop videos talking about all the new models, so be sure to check it out, and of course, subscribe for future live streams and unboxings. All right, that's it for this one. We'll see you in the next one. Brandon, out. Peace out.